Hi, everybody, and welcome to our last lab in this course, in the BPK 409 course. This will be our last data collection, and because we are going to collect some acceleration data, um, this is going to be probably a little bit shorter than our usual videos because you should already know how most of this stuff works from the lab one. But what I'm going to show you today is how you actually um, set up your equipment, how you kind of like not connect, but you fix it on your arm. So we'll basically do a, a fitness tracker today. So we'll have an accelerometer on our wrist and we'll do some walking, some running, some standing and some lying. And afterwards in Python, we will analyze this data. So we will write a um, activity classification algorithm, which will then be able to detect um, which activity you did for which time on the one hand, and then also we'll write a step counting algorithm, which will count our steps for the walking and the running part. And because we want this to be as close to an actual fitness tracker, we will try to fix the whole system on our arm with the accelerometer at the position where the smartwatch or the fitness tracker would usually be fixed. Um, for this, let me start to, um, what do we start with? Let's start with um, having a look at the equipment today, okay? Here we go. So what we need today is very similar to what we used in the lab one. So obviously we need our microcontroller. We need our um, accelerometer. Then we also need our um, open log. So for this, we will, because we are going outside, we have to collect and save our data onto our microSD. That's why we also need that microSD here. And then we need um, our power source. So the battery and the battery holder. Um, the quick cables to connect everything with each other and then I have some kind of like skin friendly tape to fix everything on my arm but you'll also need something additional than just this skin friendly tape that it's really going to be fixed and I'll show you afterwards how what I will use and give you some tips of what you can actually use as well that it's going to be really fixed on your arm and not fall out while you're running. So for our system, we obviously have to connect our microcontroller with the um, accelerometer and the open log with the accelerometer as well. And then on the other hand, we have to put our battery into the battery holder. And we'll connect this later when we will use it. Let's now have a look at the code that we'll use today. So we'll use the lab four code one for this lab four. Let me share my screen here. Here we go. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at lab four code one. And as I told you already, this code um, should be capable of collecting acceleration data and also saving the data on the microSD. So this is very similar and almost exactly the same as we did in, in, in lab one. We're using a sampling frequency of 25 here. Um, obviously, we have to use the wire function to connect all the equipment with each other. Like that's the library for the quick system. We need the library for our accelerometer and we need the library for our open log. Then I've created some variables here for X, Y, and Z. Um, and this is for afterwards for saving the data. Um, we've talked about all of this here. Then here we set up everything. So we basically start our connection with the quick cables. We start our connection with the open log and the micro SD. And I just have a delay in here just that it has some time to actually like, connect with the micro SD. Um, and then we create our, our file, which I have called here xdata.txt. Um, we, we create this file and we just check if our, mic, or if our accelerometer is connected. If not, it will just give us this error message on the micro SD basically. And then what I have done is I say that I want the accelerometer to collect with 800 Hertz. 
in the end we'll just get 25 hertz data but I'm, I, I let it connect, uh, sorry, collect it with 800 hertz and then afterwards I'm saving it with 25 hertz just that we definitely always have the right data at the moment where we want to save our data. And we're using um, 8G for the accelerometer. And then here I'm basically just like with 800 hertz I'm um, looking for what's the X value, what's the Y value, and what's the Z value. And then with 25 hertz, that's when I'm actually using the data that I've collected here and where I'm saving the data on my micro SD. And I'm not just printing my X, Y, and Z values onto the micro SD, but like we always did, I'm always printing the time at the moment of where we're actually like saving the data. Now we can upload the code to our microcontroller. So everything is connected, the micro SD not, is not inside yet. And I can connect my USB to the microcontroller. It's connected, the light is lighting up. And let's verify first if everything is working. I did that before, so yes, it's working. And I'm gonna upload it. Again, it's important that you have the right port, um, which we've done before already as tools. It's uploading now, and there we go, it's done uploading. And here, my, can you see that? Yes, my open lock here is blinking red because there is no micro SD inside yet. So now I can disconnect again. We know that the, um, that our code is on the micro SD now, and now we can talk about how we can fix the stuff on our on, on our wrist and so on. But for this, I need to take off my hoodie first. Because we want to emulate a fitness tracker as well as, well as possible, or we're basically building our own fitness tracker, it is very important that we'll put on the um, accelerometer um, the same way. So everyone in this class will have to put on the accelerometer exactly the same way that our recognition algorithm, our activity recognition algorithm will work as well as possible. The reason is because if I put on, for example, um, the accelerometer this way with X pointing to my arms and someone else puts it that way with X pointing out to my fingers and with X pointing, away from my fingers, um, then this one channel will have exactly the same, almost yeah, the opposite um, movements from some other people and it will be harder for the algorithm to learn which movement belongs or corresponds to which activity. So for this lab, I want you guys to put the accelerometer onto your left arm. And the idea is that we want the accelerometer at like not at your wrist, a little bit higher than your wrist, basically. And the Y axis pointing towards your fingers. So you can see the axis here on the accelerometer. We want the Y axis pointing towards, towards the fingers, the X axis pointing towards your thumb, and the Z axis into your, um, into your arm, basically. And now we have to like connect everything and then fix everything in a way so that the accelerometer will be at this position, will be fixed very well at this position. I also like to fix it in a way that the micro SD is actually somewhere where I can see it well because, with, uh, because I want to see the light. I want to see if data is actually being collected while I'm doing my experiment, okay? So I'm going to show you now how I will fix this whole system on my arm. Don't forget, in the end, in the end, this is everything that needs to be on your arm. Again, with your accelerometer um, this way, okay?
So this is now the um, raw version of how I'm gonna fix everything here. So what I did is I really tried to fix the accelerometer as well as possible here, okay? Then I fixed the um, microcontroller so that it's connected to the, uh, the microcontroller is here so that it's connected to the accelerometer. I put the battery in a way that I can then easily connect it to the microcontroller. And then in the end, I also connected the open lock and the open lock I want to have at a position where in the end, I can easily look at the two LEDs there, okay? And because this is not 100% safe yet, I'm now gonna add something as well that it will be better fixed. And what I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use one of those here. Um, what you can use is you can cut, off, um, cut a sock, for example, a really tight sock, and just wrap it over your arm, fix it there, um, you can use some kind of like scarf and fix it, whatever you need to like make it stay very stable on your arm while you're doing the experiment, okay? So, see if I can do that by myself. It's gonna be hard now. This is now how my personal fitness tracker looks like. Um, when I go now outside doing the activity test, people might think I'm a little bit crazy, but I guess that's our job when we're doing some pilot testing, right? Obviously, if a system like this works, then afterwards um, in industry, they'll put all those devices like together in a very, very small device, like all together in one small device, and that's how you get that smartwatch or a fitness tracker. So for me, again, to like just um, check out what's happening here. So I still have my micro SD and the LED, I can see it. Everything else is underneath, except of also here, I can connect the battery, the battery to the microcontroller. You can see that, or oh, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, to the microcontroller here, okay? Cool, so let's stop the video here. And now it's the time. Now it's the time of the day where we can finally test our own personal fitness trackers. Now it's gonna get exciting. The idea is that, um, so we'll go over the whole protocol that I've put in our lab manual. And if you wanna have clean data, it's really important that you do all the steps that I'm gonna to explain to you now. Um, after each other without doing anything in between. So what we want to do is we want to go outside, um, just stand still, and when you're standing still, you connect the microcontroller that it gets energy, look at your um, LED if it's actually working. Um, if you put your hand over it, it might be a little bit easier to see if the red light is lighting that it's powered, and if the green light is flashing, then it means that um, you're actually saving data on your microSD. So you stand, you put it on, you ch and then as soon as it starts, you just relax your arms and you stand for a minute. Standing for a minute, um, I usually have my phone with me in my other hand that I can on the one hand time myself that I know that I did at least a minute. It doesn't matter if it's longer, but it should be about a minute in that case. Um, and once the minute is over, then we can walk or no, let, no, sorry, sorry, I think on the, let me see. Um, ba -ba -bum. I don't wanna say anything wrong here. We'll start with running. So 
in our protocol and that's how we're going to do it one minute standing after the minute is over we'll run for two minutes so you just start running like you would usually do run 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 for two minutes once the two minutes are over or once at least two minutes are over um you stop you relax again um and you chill for a minute while you're chilling you can also lock the steps that you did with your um the steps that you did while running so we want to kind of like have kind of like a um an idea about how many steps you did at each run and each walk so that later we can also see if our step counting algorithm works the way as we as we want if it's accurate or not so while you're running for those two minutes we also want you to um to count steps like either you count the steps of your right foot or the left foot it doesn't matter don't count both of them um, because we want one gate cycle we want to call we want to know how many gate cycles you did so like um, just collect count the steps of your right foot for example again one minute standing two minutes running with um, uh, counting your steps one minute standing again and in this one minute standing you can lock the steps that you just counted after but um, work with your phone with the arm that you're not using because otherwise like you're doing things that is not really like um what our um our code or our algorithm will know as standing so work on the phone hold the phone in the hand that you're not using for not using for the microcontroller and so on lock your um data lock your steps after the one minute is over run for another two minutes count the steps stop after the two minutes stand for a minute in this one minute you can then again just um lock like i just use um i think my notes on on, on my phone i just say 52 and i say 42 and then i know this is for running right so after the second time running again stand for one minute and then we walk so then just normally just um like how you would usually walk um you just walk for two minutes also count your steps again stop stand for one minute in this one minute you can then lock the number of steps that you did while walking again a gate cycle we just want you to count the steps of one leg not of both legs stand for one minute walk for two minutes stand for one minute log it again um and then after so it's it's like standing one minute running two minutes standing one minute running two minutes standing one minute walking two minutes standing one minute walking two minutes standing one minute and then we want you to lie down and we want to lie down for four minutes because we want to have at least four minutes of each activity of walking running standing and lying standing we're doing in between all the time so we're getting more than four minutes we're doing two plus two minutes of walking we're doing two plus two minutes of running and then we're going to do four minutes consecutively of of lying the best way would be um if it's not too cold outside that you can basically just um after you were standing for the last time you just lie down on somewhere the ground whatever maybe you have i don't know something in your backyard or whatever just lie down put your arms to the side and just chill for four minutes basically um, obviously with your right arm you can look at your phone but keep your left arm more or less still after those four minutes are done get up stand for another minute and then you can immediately after this one minute disconnect the cord here so that the data is as clean as possible if you're doing if you for example disconnected after you walked into the house and you did some cooking or whatever um, then we'll have the data of your cooking or whatever on the data as well, which we don't want to, which means that you would then have to cut out this part. So if you, after the experiment is done, after you stood for the last one minute, immediately disconnect it, you don't have to clean any data and that's perfect. If it's bad weather outside, um, I mean, if it's bad, or if, if it's actually raining, please don't use this. That's um, not waterproof. So don't use this fitness tracker when it's raining. Just use it when it's not raining, please and thank you. And when you don't, when it's too cold or whatever, and you want, you don't want to lie outside, 
then you can just do your last two minute walk towards the house. Like, you know, walk into the house, um, try to like use the 10 last, the, the, the last 10 seconds to actually walk into the house. Um, and then when this is over, stand for, for a minute and then you can lie down on your couch at home, on your bed at home or, or whatever. And after lying down, you stand up again, you wait for a minute while standing, then you disconnect. So to repeat that one last time, the protocol is standing one minute, running for two minutes, standing for one minute, running for two minutes, standing for one minute, walking for two minutes, standing for one minute, walking for two minutes, standing for one minute, lying for four minutes, and standing for another minute. I will explain why we have the standing in between all the time. Um, I will explain this in the next, in the Python analysis video, but it's pretty important to differentiate between the first running and the second running and the walking and so on. We always want to have this still part, this almost like non-movement part in between activities um, so that it's going to be easier for us afterwards to um, label our data, but we'll talk about that later, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go outside and I'm going to collect my data and I'll be back afterwards. You know what? I think that's actually it for, for, for the video today. So I'm going to go outside. I'm going to do the whole experiment. And afterwards, I'm just going to take the micro SD like we did in lab one, connect it to my computer and save the file for this data collection and that's basically it and then the next video will be the analysis anyway so i hope that this video was helpful enough and i'm gonna go for a walk now i wish you all a happy and good day um i guess see you guys soon have a good one bye bye i'm back i just did my activity um experiment um, and I realized, I think I should show you one more thing that I would recommend you guys to do. So once you're done with the activity experiment and you have disconnected this right after you um, stood for the last time, you did standing for the last time, um, you can just uh, go inside or go to your computer, whatever, and take out your micro SD and check if it actually collected and if the data looks like it should look like before you take all the stuff off has happened to me before. I took everything off, like, you know, took a one or two days a break. Then I, I looked at the data, it was and I had to start from completely scratch. So I just recommend you um, take it out, put it into your computer and let me share my screen here. So this is where I saved the file that I collected with the system. Um, so it's the file, the text file that um, was saved on my micro SD. It's this X acceleration data.txt. I just directly put it into my working folder in Python. Then I wrote a very short code, which basically really just imports the data and plots it just to see if everything is working out, if everything worked out well. So if I run this now, this is what the data looks like if you did standing, running, standing, running, stand. So it's like, yeah, standing, running, standing, running, standing walking, standing, walking, standing, lying, and then in the end standing again. Um, so I really recommend you just do this, just check if everything worked out before you take everything off. And if it doesn't look like something like this, obviously it might look a little different, but if you put on the accelerometer the very right way, as I showed you, then you will also see that the x-axis is probably higher at running and probably higher at walking and so on. I wish you good luck with the data collection. I hope it works at the first time. And if not, um, keep it on and then you can just take the micro SD, put it in again and do the experiment again. And if you did it uh, in, a, in a perfect way, you can also have access to um, the USB-C here. So if maybe the code didn't upload or something like this, you can just connect it here, uh, upload it again and then go from there. I think that's it for today. Again, good luck, and I'll see you guys in the actual Python analysis video. Bye-bye.